The Fallout universe is an unforgiving and ruthless place that regularly claims the lives of scavengers, vagrants, traders, and many others who simply have no choice but to go out into the irradiated and mutant infested world in search of business. But for the incredibly powerful and wealthy elite, they can have someone else do the work for them. One person who wanted to take advantage of those with deep pockets flush with caps was Riley, a young woman who as a child lost her parents to the wasteland and aimlessly wandered the ruins of Washington DC alone. That was until she came across a military man who took her in and for the next 12 years taught her everything she needed to know to survive the hellscape they called home. Once her mentor passed away, either from old age or sickness that came from living in the irradiated ruins, Riley was left alone. Yet, she carried him to Arlington Cemetery and buried him alongside the other soldiers who had died protecting their country. At 26 years old, Riley had honed her skills and decided it was time to finally profit from them, more so than she already had. And so she created Riley's Rangers, a somewhat noble band of mercenaries looking to make an honest day's wage. Their base of operations can be found inside a partially destroyed building, the interior is far better off, containing everything a small team needs between missions. Four years later, they're still operational. Contracts vary from super mutant cleansing to ruins mapping with a geomapper module. The projected income is unknown, but the pay is surprisingly good. Whatever the reasons are for mapping the ruins and ridding the mutants, we don't know. All we have is the name of the buyer, Mr. Smith. Whoever Mr. Smith is, he has plenty of caps and a desire to understand the DC ruins, all the while making it safe enough to explore. Perhaps they want treasures from the museum, or government secrets from the White House. Either way, Riley doesn't care, so long as she and her team get paid. Speaking of her team, there's Riley, the commander of the company, who sources contracts, distributes pay, which averages out to 50 caps per mission, and recruits new members when one of her team either leaves or falls during combat. Carl is the medic, whose name became Butcher after Brick, another member of the team, called it him once as a joke and the name stuck. Butcher and Riley also share a complicated relationship that she worries will affect them on a professional level. As the old adage goes, don't mix business with pleasure, but Riley would like it to continue. In her words, it's been a while since I've been with anyone, and it's nice to know someone out there cares. Brick is the heavy weapons specialist, and is currently the youngest member of the group. She often butts heads with Butcher due to her impatience during the debriefings, but she's reliable, calm under fire using her uniquely named minigun, Eugene, and she's fiercely loyal to the Rangers, making her Riley's first go-to person in the event of a falling out in the ranks, which is incredibly rare. Donovan is the technician who was highly recommended to Riley by her contact within the Brotherhood of Steel. He's a wizard when it comes to repairing firearms and personal armor, but his knowledge of electrical systems, hydraulics, and things alike is limited, which does hinder their progress as DC is chock full of pre-war facilities with doors they can't open, which often leads to their missions being cut short. But Riley is hopeful that Donovan's expertise will improve over time. The final and newest member of the group is Theo, the quartermaster. He cares for and organizes the company's equipment and carries extra bullets and supplies they may need during a mission. Due to his position being new, his contract is provisional, whereas the others are ongoing. Now I know I said Theo was the final member of the group, which he currently is, but there were two others who once served Riley's Rangers, and they were Dallas and Kira. Other than their names and history of serving the Rangers, they remain a mystery. Riley wrote about losing them, either figuratively or literally, is unknown, but due to their loss, Theo was brought on. However, his resourcefulness pales in comparison. Theo is considered green by the others, meaning a lack of experience, and this lacking became all too apparent during the Rangers' latest mission, which I will explain in just a moment. When the Rangers aren't mapping areas such as the Capitol Building, Vernon Square, or Tacoma Park, and aren't facing off against super mutants, Talon Company mercenaries, or raiders, they're looking to restock their supplies, but not through buying or trading, but by combing areas of interest. 
Butcher was eager to check out Our Lady of Hope Hospital in search of medical supplies. This alone might not have warranted a visit, but Riley wanted to set up a transmitter on the Statesman Hotel roof, which was the building across the road from the hospital. Due to its convenient location, they decided to do both in one go, and they were soon geared up and heading inside the hospital in search of supplies. Inside, they found Stimpaks, Radaway, and other such items, but the deeper they got, the more dangerous it became. As super mutants and centaurs roamed the halls and sought to end the ranger's shopping trip earlier than intended. Overrun, they couldn't go back the way they came. Instead, they fought their way to the outside through a broken wall on one of the upper floors. Crossing twisted steel and swapping one hellhole for another, across the road, the hotel was just as bad as the hospital maybe worse, and the only way left to go was up. Mutants relentlessly pursued the rangers as they ascended the stairs, and a stray grenade caught Theo, killing him instantly. The others had no choice but to push onwards or share a grave with the now dead quartermaster. Leaving him behind, the rangers returned fire, setting traps as they ran, and eventually they broke free from the cramped confines of the hotel, making it to the roof. But this didn't change things. They were still trapped, their ammo was running dangerously low, and what they had brought with them had been left behind with what remained of Theo. Searching the roof, Riley found an elevator, which theoretically could take them down to the ground floor, but it was out of power, and mutants were on the way. So they set up a defensive perimeter and held their position. Between waves of mutants, Donovan set up a distress call using the broadcast tower they had originally wanted to use, just not for this and waited for help to arrive. This is Butcher of Riley's Rangers. If anyone can hear this signal, we're in danger and we need your help. But no help came. The roof quickly became painted with shell casings and green corpses. The rangers had made a valiant last stand, but the mutants were unyielding and showed no signs of letting up, and it was only a matter of time until their dwindling supply of ammunition ran out altogether. So Riley made the difficult decision to leave her rangers behind and try to find help before it was too late. The others were reluctant to let their leader go alone, but only one of them would be able to sneak past the mutants, and Riley was the most capable. They knew it was their only chance of surviving, and so Riley was the one to use a stealth boy and flee the hotel while the others served as a distraction. Backtracking through the blood-smeared corridors, Riley passed the traps they had placed, and then the remains of Theo in the ammo crates he carried. She descended silently as dozens of mutants rushed for the rooftop and was almost at the street when the stealth boy ran dry. Outside, without stealth technology, a super mutant soon had a hold of her and tossed her through the air like a baseball, almost ripping her arm off in the process. Her flight was cut short by something solid, and she fell into a culvert out of sight. Residents from Underworld stumbled upon her broken body and brought her to Barrows, the town doctor. Riley had multiple lacerations, contusions, internal bleeding, blunt force trauma, a broken leg, and had slipped into a coma. Quite frankly, it was a miracle that she was even alive. Barrows removed her armor, or what was left of it, and did what he could to make her comfortable. Yet, he had no idea who she was. It was only when he noticed the few scraps of plating she wore bore the name Riley's Rangers did he recognize her. And then, he was certain that it was only a matter of time until the other Rangers showed up to take her home. But, we already know that wasn't going to happen. And this is where the Lone Wanderer comes into the equation. One way or another, they learned of the Rangers' distressing situation and infiltrated the Statesman Hotel. But what happens after that remains a mystery. Some say the Wanderer was able to rescue the Rangers from certain death without a single casualty. Others believe one or more Ranger fell during the escape, while few think that while the Rangers put up a valiant display that would have made a behemoth tremble with fear, they were ultimately consumed by the raging horde. We know the Wanderer's abilities are preternatural, but even they have their limits, and the stories surrounding them are in some way bound to be embellished. So, until the truth is revealed, you can decide. Did one or more ranger escape the statesman, or did they all die doing what they loved? Either way, Riley remains, and with or without her mercenaries, she will continue, as she always has, to survive.
Losing a bit of the Merc Edge, eh? Don't get soft on me now. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.